Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. Today we're going to look at balancing equations, which is a classic area where students tend to struggle. It's the kind of thing where once you've got your head around it, it becomes very straightforward, but can be a bit scary at first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break it apart and do something that at the beginning appears to be um, very, very easy or not related. And then I'm going to slowly build up and show you how you can use very simple technique to balance equations. So we'll start with a really simple formula. Let's take N2. So this represents nitrogen, which exists in the air all around us. This little two here tells us that there are two nitrogen atoms bonded together. So I can draw a little atom like this and another one next to it like that. These two things show the exact same thing. They're just different ways of representing the same thing. I could do another example. Let's take H2O. H2O is water and it's got atoms of hydrogen, specifically two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Now, in reality, they don't necessarily bond in that order, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to clump them together like that. What I'd like you to do now, so I'm going to pause my video, and I'd like you to try and do the same for me for NH3 for CH4 and for O2. Do those ones for me now, please. So you've now done those three. We'll start with NH3, very straightforward. 1N and 3 hydrogens like that. CH4, 1C and 4 hydrogens like that, O2, one O, and another O. Done. Very easy, very straightforward. The only addition I want to make to this is if you add numbers in front of those things. So let's go back to the first two examples that we had. And we'll ignore these for the minute. The first example we did was N2. And we drew that like this. Now let's say I said, well, instead of one N2, I want to have three of them. That means I just draw three of these. That means I've got three of these N2s, one N2, two N2, three N2s. Sometimes students might think, oh, I just draw it like this. I've got six ends, so I'll just draw them like that. But this would be wrong. And the reason why this is wrong is because this two tells me that the nitrogens are bonded together. That's what that two tells me. It shows me that this nitrogen and this nitrogen are bonded together. 
this nitrogen and this nitrogen are bonded together. That three tells me I've got three of them. This one here is more like N6, where I've got six nitrogens all bonded together. This is not three N2, this is one N6. Let's do one more together. Let's say I ask you to do four H2O. H2O is the example we did before. So I've got an H, an H, and an O, and I'm going to need four of them. And again, they have to be separate. They are different things. So I've got four H2Os. One, two, three, four. I'm not going to bond them all together because that four means that they are separate and distinct. I'd like you to try now, and actually I've changed, I've changed my mind, we'll do different examples. We will go for two of these, three of these. Have a go at drawing those two for me, please. Okay, you've now had a chance to do those. Your H2O2, this is called hydrogen peroxide. It's a bleaching agent, so some people use it to make their hair go a really crazy white colour. Two of them would look like this. Each one has two hydrogens and two oxygens. One, two hydrogens, one, two oxygens. Two hydrogens, two oxygens. But there are two of them. One, two. Cl2, chlorine gas, it's a green gas, it's toxic, and I draw them like this. Now, to you, that seems really, really easy, really straightforward. And that's good. It will start to get a bit more complicated. Let's say I take a really simple reaction and I take some H2, some hydrogen, and I react that with oxygen and I make water. You'll get asked to balance this equation. First, let's look at what that means. I'm going to draw a little dotted line down the middle just so that we're really, really clear. I've got things I'm starting with and I've got things I'm finishing with. We often call these reactants and this or these, depending on how many things there are, products. The first thing I want to do is draw it out in exactly the same way we've been doing. H2, two hydrogens. O2, two oxygens. H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. So far, so good. Except that there's a little problem. My little problem is that just by looking at this, I can see I've got two hydrogens on this side and two hydrogens on that side, and that's all well and good. But I've got two oxygens here and only one over there. That for me is a big problem. And the reason why it's a big problem is because of the conservation of mass, which we'll cover in another video. That tells me, the conservation of mass tells me, that atoms can't be created, they can't be destroyed. If I say that I've got two oxygens to start with, but only one when I finish, I've destroyed an atom. Where's it gone? It can't go anywhere. So where is it? Has it vanished? Has it been destroyed? Can't be. It's at this point that I teach you the simplest method possible to balance equations, and it's called Mr. Boxer's Balancing Boxes. And the reason why it's called Mr. Boxer's Balancing Boxes is because we take these diagrams and we put a box around them, like this. And we do that because I need you to realize the only rule of balancing equations, which is all you can do is add a box. 
you cannot do anything other than add one or two or three or more boxes. Nothing else. You most certainly cannot tamper or mess around with what's inside the box. All you can do is add another box. What do I mean by that? I can see I've got two oxygens here and one oxygen there. I need another oxygen on this side. Now you might be tempted to say, oh, well, what I'll do is I'll just like open the box a bit and squeeze another oxygen in and then close the box again. That's breaking the rules because the rule was you cannot mess around with the box. All you can do is add another box. Okay, so I'll add another box and I make it nice and separate from the first one. And inside it, I'll draw exactly the same thing. Cool. I've added another box. I've now got two oxygens here, two oxygens there. But I've now given myself a further problem, which is that I've got two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here, which means a total of four hydrogens on this side, but only two on that side. What do I do? Well, I might be tempted to open that box and add some more, but I can't do that. That's against the rules because the only rule is that all you can do is add a box. Okay, I'm going to add a box. And now, when I look at it, everything seems kind of happy. Because I've got one, two, three, four hydrogens here. One, two, three, four hydrogens here. One, two oxygens here. One, two oxygens there. Which means those diagrams, those atoms, are now balanced and happy. My final step is to count the boxes. Here I have two boxes. Here I have one box. Here I have two boxes. And now what I recommend is you just copy and paste this equation. So you just take this exactly as it is and put it over there. H2, O2, so I've got the H2 from here to there, O2 from here to there, arrow, put the plus in as well, the arrow, and then 2H2O. If you want, you can rub that out because it's not if you want, you can rub that out because it's not directly relevant because it's like in maths, you would never write one X. You just write X. So for now, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the one, leave it like that. And now my equation is balanced. Let's do another example together. Let's take some of our substances from before. And this time we'll take N2 plus H2 reacting to form NH3. I draw out my bubbles just like before. And I'm going to put my dots down the middle. And I look at that and I want to draw my boxes around it. These are Mr. Boxes balancing boxes. And I look at that and I think, well, I've got three hydrogens over here and two over there, which is a problem. And I've got one nitrogen here and two over there. I'll tell you what, I'll start with the nitrogens because if I just add one more box, then my nitrogens will be happy. I can't open up the box and shove another nitrogen in. All I can do is add an entire new box, like so. I've now got two nitrogens and two nitrogens, which is happy. But I've gone and messed it up because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. If I had one box here, I don't think that would be enough. Because I've now only got four hydrogens and I need six. So I'm going to add another one. And I look at that and I think that looks balanced to me because I've got two nitrogens here, two nitrogens here. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens there. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens there. My final step then is to write out the numbers. One, 
three, two, one N two, three H two, two and H three. And like we said before, you can get rid of the one if you like, because it doesn't actually tell us anything. That there is a happily balanced equation. Let's try one together. Have a go at this one yourself. Na plus F2 reacts to form NaF. Try that yourself, and when you're ready, the correct answer will appear on the board, and you just press play. Now that you've done that, the correct answer will be 2Na plus F2 going to 2NaF. If you got that right, well done, you can skip to the next section. If you didn't, watch carefully while I run through how to do it again. started there, I apologise. Two Fs, one F. You're now ready to try some yourselves, and I'll put some questions here for you. Okay, you're now ready to try some for yourselves. Uh, why don't you have a go at questions one to six first, and then I'll show you the answers. So do so. pause your screen and do questions one to six now. And the answers to one to six are now up on the screen for you. If you've got any of them wrong, maybe go back to your working first, check every step, see if there's an obvious error. If there's nothing obvious, then it might be a good idea to just start it brand new from scratch. Um, so, so to not look at your old work and just do it again fresh. And once you've got those, then you can move on to the next questions and pause your screen. And there are the answers for you. Uh, the only one that's slightly difficult is that one at the bottom there um, with the OH in the brackets. What that means is that the two multiplies everything that's inside the brackets. So you've got two times the oxygens, two times the hydrogens. So MgOH with the two would be one magnesium, two oxygens, and two hydrogens. If you've got all of those correct, then well done. You can now balance equations. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to subscribe. And um, just let me know in the comments if there's a particular topic you want me to have a go at and do a video for you. Thanks again. Bye.